I realize technically it's like a bigger to go yet. You know, I have like 87 slides to cover, so I'm just going to launch right into this. And yes, if you do math, I mean it's like two slides per minute, so you know. Just remember, I'm not saying anything I haven't told you before, and I'm not showing you any slides you haven't seen before. And so this is a review. So don't panic, just you know, come along. Okay, so so the circulatory system. So remember first we had blood vessels and vascular tunics. So you should be able to identify vascular tunics and the different types of blood vessels. So remember the tunica intimate is a very thin layer of just one or two cells which lines the lumen. Then we have this very nice internal elastic lamina. This is a special stain, so it highlights that uh, those elastic fibers very nicely. The tunica media is mostly smooth muscle, but yes, it too can have elastic fibers in it, and they show up very nicely in this special stain. And we have an external elastic lamina, a little fuzzier, not quite as discreet as the internal elastic lamina. And then lastly, an outer connective tissue, uh, tunica adventitia. In some vessels, like elastic vessels, that tunica media can be just chock full of elastic fibers, and then it will take on a, a somewhat grainy, rather different appearance. In these larger vessels, you can also have small vessels within the tunica adventitia itself. So in this outer tunica adventitia, here we have some blood vessels which supply the muscle of the media. And so we can see those in the adventitia along with some fat. And you can also sometimes see small nerves, the nervi vascularis, which control vaso motion in these larger vessels. Here we have a nice slice through a muscular artery in both an H and E and a special stain. So we've got blood in the lumen of the vessel. <coughs> in this magnification, it's very difficult to make out the uh, tunic intima, and that internal elastic lamina that rests right below it. The media shows up very nicely with its smooth muscle, and then we have that outer tunica adventitia. In this case, the adventitia kind of blends in with the surrounding adipose tissue. Here we have a special stain of that same section, which again highlights things like elastic fibers. So we've got blood in the lumen, that very thin, delicate endothelium or tunica intima, and then that, in this case, the internal elastic lamina is stained very darkly. We have a muscular tunica media, there's our external elastic lamina, and here's our outer tunic adventition. Okay, so that's a very nice example of a muscular part of it. This is an elastic stain of, the, of an elastic artery, and as I promised, there's that tunic immediate is just full of all those elastic fibers, and in higher magnification, you can see the elastic fibers interspersed with the smooth muscle and just the front of the middle collagen. When you get to arterioles, now remember you're losing uh, some of the key characters that you see in those uh, larger vessels, so you start to lose your uh, elastic lamina. So when you look at an arterial, in this case, it's this one is constricted. This is a special stain. So the endothelium, the tunica intima, is kind of thrown into these folds. And then you can see the tunica media is kind of a paler lavender. That's a smooth muscle. And then the adventitia is just this little restricted bit on the outside, that little stain a little darker again. Now down here in H and E, it's a similar story where you've got the intima, in this case the vessel is constricted, so the intima is more flattened, and it's very difficult to see. But mostly what you see is a nucleus associated with an endothelial cell, and then you see the smooth muscle of the tunic media, and then that looser connective tissue adventitia around it. And remember, very commonly blood vessels run in pairs, so you'll have an artery in the vein or an arterial in the venule, side by side. And that's exactly what we have here, where you've got your arterial here, and there's an accompanying venule. Arterial, venule. A little thinner, a little more loosely organized. Here we have a larger vein, uh, small vein or venule. Same thing over here. And notice in comparison, arteries and arterioles, because of their thicker wall, tend to be very circular or oval in cross section. Veins and venules, because the wall is thinner, it's flimsier, it doesn't support the vessel as much. So they are more irregular in that line. And also, when you look at the lumen diameter compared to the wall thickness, in arteries and arterioles, the lumen diameter is fairly small. But in veins and venules, the lumen is quite large. And so when you look at this vessel, this is a perfect example. Look how large that lumen is. 
compared to how thin and flimsy the wall is. So that's your clue right there. That that's a small vein. Okay. Um, this one, the, the section isn't quite as clear, but it's the same principle as this vessel. As we get to smaller blood vessels, okay, here we have a small venule, which is branching into a capillary. And your big key when you're identifying capillaries is that, is that they're only going to be you know, one or two red cells in diameter. So they're very, very small. Otherwise, they look very, very similar. So here we have a special stain of a capillary. This vessel, to be frank, I'm kind of using this slide double time. Uh, I'm using it here on the capillary slide, and I use the same one later on the uh, venule slide. Uh, because this vessel here, exactly how big is it? It's very wide in this dimension and smaller in that dimension. So it could be a capillary, it could be a, a small venule, hard to tell. And I, I would zing you if you said either one of those in a, uh, a quiz. Veins, one key character of veins uh, on, the vas vas on the venous side of vasculature in general is that they have valves. Okay? And here you can see a valve in a small vein blocking out blood flow. And here's promise to use that same slide again in the, the venual side. Here's an EM of the venule. And you can see the tunica intima, the endothelium. There's the nucleus of the endothelium. Here you can see a little bit of uh, a media, and then a few wisps of collagen, and, and some make up the uh, tunica adventitia. So this is uh, going to be a small venule. And again, this one I would probably say is a venule. That was probably a capillary. But, you know, remember, play the odds. When you look at this, kind of go with your, your first, your gut impression. Don't overanalyze them you know, too much. Because your first guess is probably right. As you get to the larger veins, uh, when you look at the characteristics of the wall, these larger muscular veins, they look very much like the muscular arteries that they correspond to. And once again, the key is the lumen diameter and the overall outline. Okay, so even though if you just look at the slice through the wall here, you'd say, well, that could be a small, uh, that could be an, a muscular artery. And you're absolutely right, it could be. But look at the overall size of the lumen of the vessel. That's clearly a vein and not an artery. Okay, a muscular vein. So. By the time you get to lymphatics, what makes lymph vessels different from blood vessels? Well, they're even thinner and flimsier than veins. And remember, what's their job? Their job is to collect lymph to collect recirculated proteins and fluid which have leaked out of the vascular system. Okay? And so when you look at the lumen, there shouldn't be any blood in it. If you see blood in a lymph vessel, something is very wrong with something. So here we have a thin walled vessel. It's got valves. So you should know right away by the presence of that valve. It's not an artery or an arterial. So you should be thinking vein or manual. But then you look closely and you say, wait, I don't see any blood. What's all this pale pink stuff? When you see pale pink stuff, you should think protein and therefore lymph. So that should key you in the lymphatic. Now, when you look at lymphatics and cross section, just how flimsy are they? Well, they look like nothing. And so here we have two lymph vessels which are constricted and they're barely recognizable as vessels. Here's one that's dilated um, because it actually has lymph flowing through it. And even so, there's like nothing on the, in the wall. Okay? It has virtually no structure or architecture. So that's another clue that you're looking at a lymphatic and not the blood vessel. Okay, so that's it for vessels. What can I use? Okay, so now we get to uh, skin. <coughs> you'll be able to recognize layers of skin and uh, you know, some characteristics of each of those layers. So first we've got two kinds of skin. We've got thick skin and thin skin. <coughs> Thick skin, remember, is thick because it has a really, really thick and stratum cornea. In addition to that thick and stratum cornea, it has a special layer called the stratum lucidum, a clear layer between that stratum cornea and the stratum granulosum. The stratum granulosum is visible because it's darker and the cells have granules that are visible uh, on both EM and light microscopy. Beneath that, we have a, a stratum spinosum, and then there's a stratum basale right at the dermoepidermal junction, which this is too low application for it to be uh, readily visible. When you look at thin skin, thin skin has most of those layers, but in varying thickness. So when you look at the stratum corneum of thin skin, it's very thin. That's why it's called thin skin. 
And you can see it's continuously exfoliating, so it's very common to see just you know, some of these dead cells, the squames, uh, shedding off, being lost into the environment. Once again, there's our stratum granulosum, that grainy layer. Here's your thick stratum spinosum. And then we have our basal layer at the very bottom, resting on the basal membrane, that stratum basalis. And then here we have our, our dermis. This is the upper layer of the dermis, that papillary dermis. Now, even at this magnification, you can see some of the specialized cells present within the skin. We see a few of these cells here with a sort of halo effect around them. What are those? Those are the Langerhans cells. Remember, the Langerhans cells are fixed tissue nacrophages, whose job is phagocytosis within the uh, epidermis. And you can also see a few cells at the very, <coughs> within the basal layer, which look very similar um, on H&E, which don't stain well. And those guys are probably uh, melanocytes. Remember, melanocytes themselves don't stain well, but they produce melanin that is picked up by the surrounding cells. And we'll see some better examples of this later. Right here, for instance, what's all this granular brown stuff here? Well, that's melanin, and that was produced by melanocytes. And so that cell right there with a little halo around it, and this one are probably the melanocytes that produced all that melanin. There's probably another good example. And when you see a cell like that with a halo, and it's further up in the stratum spinosum, then it's most likely a longer on cell. If you wanted to be absolutely certain, you'd have to do a special immunity chemical stain. So once again, we've got our epidermis. Notice the dermo-epidermal junction is corrugated. So we have these epidermal ridges and dermal ridges. Um, the epidermal ridges are also known as reedy ridges. And the dermal ridges are also known as dermal papillae, and they add strength to the skin um, and prevent the epidermis from just sliding off. So when you look at the dermis now, you can see there's a, a superficial and a deeper dermis. And notice you can see a, a, a tinctorial change, a color change at the junction of those two. So within the superficial dermis, the collagen bundles are smaller. And so because they're smaller, they don't stain as darkly. So the superficial or papillary dermis looks lighter pink. The deeper dermis, the reticular dermis, has thicker, heavier collagen bundles, and so the collagen stains more darkly, so it's a darker pink. Sometimes you can see uh, blood vessels within the dermis, though it's kind of hit or miss uh, whether you can see any of those at uh, vasculature or not. This is a low power view showing you up here is our, our epidermis. It's thin skin. You can see that stratum scornium stratum corneum is stripping off. And you can see up here is our stratum, sorry, our uh, papillary dermis, that superficial dermis. And here is our thicker, deep reticular dermis. And then right about here, you get the beginning of the hypodermis, or that subcutis, where you have a lot of subcutaneous fat. Um, and then you can see various glands within this deep dermis and the hypodermis. Those are Sorry? Another American plan? Yeah, these were these are some American sweat plans, but they don't, didn't show up that well, so I wasn't going to bother with saying that before. Yeah, American sweat plans. Okay, so when we talk about the uh, epidermis itself, you should be able to recognize individual cell layers within the epidermis. So the first layer, the basal layer, or the germinal layer, is known as the stratum basali, or the stratum germinata. That rests on a basal membrane at the dermo-epidermal junction. And very commonly, though not always, this, as the cells line up, they may become columnar, and when they do that, the nuclei tend to line up like this. So they have a very distinct look. Whereas up here, we have the cells of the stratum spinosum. That's, oh sorry, um, the, the cells of the stratum uh, basale, to facilitate anchoring to that basal membrane, also have specialized cell uh, junctions. So they have hemidesmosomes, which anchor these cells to that uh, papillary dermis to basal membrane. So here we have an EM of some of those hemidesmosomes in that, at that uh, basal membrane. <coughs> now, this is a slightly different section, which has been overstained to highlight the characteristics of the stratum spinosum. In the stratum spinosum, it's also known as the purple cell layer, because these cells have very prominent intracellular connections. In this case, they're very prominent desmosomes which connect the cells together. And so the tonofibrils within the cytoplasm anchor onto these desmosomes 
and they provide enhanced cellular connection. And so when you look at these cells, 